Welcome everyone. I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video at laurashu.com. In this video I'll discuss the new profiles here in Lightroom Classic as well as in Lightroom CC for mobile devices, Lightroom CC desktop, and in Adobe Camera Raw. Now my plan here is to explain everything using Lightroom Classic and then I'll show you the location of the features on mobile devices and in Lightroom CC Desktop. Now for RAW files, we've had profiles in Lightroom for ages, way down in the camera calibration panel. But most people never discovered them and they were limited in number. Now we have many more. Now profiles are intended to be the starting point for your editing. So fortunately, Profile selection has now been moved up to the top of the basic panel. Let's go into the profile browser to see what we've got. There are several categories of profiles. These top three are just for raw files. Note that these three raw sections won't show if you're working with a JPEG or other non-raw file. Then these four are for any file type, raw, JPEG, TIFFs, PSDs, and PNGs. I'll open up the Adobe RAW folder. As you hover over a profile, you'll see it previewed in the main window. Now, Adobe likens profiles to film in the old days. You would choose a film type based on what color response you wanted. For example, you might choose Fujifilm's Velvia for shooting landscapes because it saturated the greens and the blues. Or you might choose Provia if you were shooting portraits because it did a good job with skin tones. So the different profiles will give you different color and tonal responses. A critical difference from film, however, is that you can change your profile at any time. Whereas once you've shot your image on film, you obviously can't change the film. Now I'll discuss some of the profiles briefly, but there's no need to overthink this process. Just choose the one you like best. Now, the new default for raw images that you import from now on will be Adobe Color. Whether you are aware of it or not, the default in the past has been Adobe Standard. Now, I'm not really seeing a difference between the two for this particular image, but generally you'll find that the colors have been tweaked a little bit for Adobe Color, and they're a little bit more saturated and there's a little bit more contrast. Actually, clicking on the profile applies it, by the way. Adobe Monochrome is now the default black and white profile. Adobe Landscape adds a little more contrast and saturates colors that are common in landscape photography, like greens and blues. Adobe Neutral is very flat. Its goal is to give you as much editing headroom as possible, so the colors and contrast are muted so that you can take control and edit it exactly to taste. Adobe Portrait is fine-tuned for skin tones, Adobe Standard is the old default, and then Adobe Vivid is more vivid. It's designed to be more of a one-click solution. For some photos, it might be all of the editing that you need. Now we're viewing the profiles in Grid View here. You can click on the drop-down and choose Large to see larger thumbnails or you can just choose a list. I prefer list or large because I can put the cursor in one spot and then just scroll and I get a preview very quickly of each one. If there's a profile that you like and you want to use regularly, then click on this star. That will put it up in the favorite section and when you're not in the profile browser, you can choose it by clicking on the drop down here. Here's the portrait one. Then the profile that you've applied will show right here. Let's go back into the profile browser. Now we've had camera matching profiles previously in the camera calibration panel. These are camera make and model specific. They match your camera's picture styles or whatever your camera manufacturer calls those. So these profiles are specific to the Olympus camera that this image was shot with. In-camera settings aren't applied to RAW files, so these profiles will allow you to achieve the look of some of those settings. If you've noticed that what you see on your camera's LCD screen 
looks different than your raw file in Lightroom, it's because the in-camera previews are JPEGs with all of the in-camera settings applied. If you like these previews better, explore these camera matching profiles. Same goes if you're using the embedded previews workflow and prefer the look of the previews. Then we have some older legacy profiles. So that's what we have specifically for raw files. Then we have these four creative profile sections that can be applied to any file type. Now I'll tell you what Adobe says about the categories, but really I would suggest coming in here and just exploring. Artistic profiles are more edgy with stronger color shifts. Modern fit with current photography styles. So there are some very different styles in here. And then vintage contains some styles that are reminiscent of analog effects. So washed out looks, cross process looks, etc. Finally, there are lots of different black and white starting points in here. Now let me give you one more tip about the profile browser. Let's go back to grid view. You could do this in any view. It might be helpful to widen this panel. Hover over the edge here to get the double arrow and drag to the left. Now you can actually drag it more than it seems like you can by holding down the Alt or the Option key and dragging. That's a little too big though. <laughs> All right, if you choose one of the creative profiles, I'll go into Modern and I'll choose Modern 7. You'll have an amount slider, which controls intensity. So to the right makes it more intense, to the left less intense. That amount slider is not available for profiles above this line, meaning for the profiles that are for raw files only. All right, a couple more quick tips. This is a filter here. Clicking on B&W will show you just the black and white profiles. And same with color, of course. I'll go back to all. Finally, if you add a profile to favorites and you want to remove it, come into the favorite section and click on the star again. I'll close the profile browser. Now, as I mentioned, I would apply a profile towards the beginning of your workflow. Generally, I would say first, but if you have an image that's just too bright or too dark to make that decision on, then go ahead and do some basic editing on the image first. Now, just because you've chosen a profile in the beginning doesn't mean that you can't change your mind later. You can come back at any point and change the profile. Now, one question that might come up for you is what's the difference between a profile and a preset? You might find, for example, that there are vintage presets here, and now we have vintage profiles. A profile will not change the sliders. So you can apply a profile on top of existing editing without risking wiping that editing out. Presets do change the sliders, so they might affect pre-existing editing. Because of that, if you can achieve an effect with a profile, I would use that over a preset. One advantage of presets affecting sliders is that you can go down through the sliders and understand exactly how a preset was created. You can't do that with profiles. Now every image must have a profile and only one profile, whereas you don't need to apply any presets to images and you can apply several presets. Now one final point, before I move on to Lightroom CC. Some of the creative profiles use 3D lookup tables to map existing image colors into their new color space. Now I won't go into that in detail, but bottom line, because of that, these profiles can create effects that can't be created with Lightroom sliders and tools. So they can increase the power of Lightroom. Now anyone can create a profile, though I won't get into that here. Expect though to see many third-party profile offerings available from the day that Lightroom Classic 7.3 comes out. I really look forward to seeing what people come up with. Let's briefly take a look at where profiles are in Lightroom Mobile. I'm on my iPhone, 
I'm on the editing tab. And down at the bottom, I'll scroll to the left and I'll tap on profiles. At the top of the screen, it shows which profile I'm using now, Adobe Standard. Then at the bottom, it shows the set that I was last in, which is artistic. If I tap on the word artistic, it will collapse that and I can access any of the other sets. I'll choose a modern profile. Because it's a creative profile, not a raw profile, I have the amount slider to adjust the intensity. Before I close the profile browser, notice the stars on the profiles for adding to favorites. I'll click on the check mark in the bottom right to close the browser. Now let's take a look at where this feature is in the cloud-based Lightroom CC application. I'll select a photo and I'll go to the edit view. Profile is right here at the top. Here's the profile that I'm using. I'll click on browse to go into the profile browser. I've got lots of favorites in here and all of the other categories as well. So that's it for the new profiles in Lightroom Classic and in Lightroom CC. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That tells everybody that my videos are informative and worth watching. I'm Laura Shue.